Hi there, welcome to Michael on the Go, Catholic Family Man Edition, and I am your host, Michael Gennati. Gospel Reflections for the 27th of February. So today in the Gospel, we see a repetition of the theme from yesterday. You know, Christ understands that when we look at our own sinful nature, at our, at our fallen philosophies, things that you know, get drilled into us by this world, that constant bombardment, that, you know, it's not enough to just say something and leave it and go on, but oftentimes he finds new opportunities to continue to bring it up. And so the church, especially in this time of Lent, as we seek repentance and conversion, continues to bring the message home around what's important, how should our lives be ordered, on whom should we be focused. So let's go ahead and, it, you know, today I highly recommend, um, you know, if you have the Word Among Us, my wife gets a book, uh, one called Magnificat or any of those, go through all the readings and the responsorial psalms and stuff. They all fit so beautifully together. But let's go ahead and we're going to read, this is from the book of Matthew, chapter 20, uh, verses 17 through 28. And we now see Jesus starting to call attention to what's going to happen as he approaches Jerusalem and as we approach the Passion and Resurrection. As Jesus was going up to Jerusalem, he took the twelve disciples aside by themselves and said to them on the way, Behold, we are going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be handed over to the chief priests and the scribes, and they will condemn him to death and hand him over to the Gentiles to be mocked and scourged and crucified, and he will be raised on the third day. Then the mother of the sons of Zebedee approached Jesus with her sons and did him homage, wish, wishing to ask him for something. He said to her, What do you wish? She answered him, command that these two sons of mine sit one at your right and the other at your left in your kingdom jesus said in reply you do not know what you are asking can you drink the chalice that i am going to drink and remember jesus just let us know you know he knows what's going to happen and in fact he also knows what their mother was asking for and what the fate is for his disciples remember not only did Christ go to the cross but his disciples you know and that's one of the, the great uh, great evidences of the mission that Christ had and and the authenticity is that his disciples these simple men were so willing to leave their homes and everything after Jesus was crucified after the resurrection which they all experienced firsthand they were so impacted by it that they were willing to leave their homes their lives put themselves in grave peril and indeed for the most part be martyred horrifically standing on the truth of Christ and he asks them he says can you drink the chalice that I am going to drink they said to him we can he replied, My chalice you will indeed drink, but to sit at the right and at my left, this is not mine to give, but is for those... <laughs> if I can read. This is not mine to give, but is for those for whom it has been prepared by my Father. When the ten heard this, they became indignant at the two brothers. But Jesus summoned them and said, You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and the great ones make their authority over them felt. But it shall not be so among you. Rather, whoever wishes to be great among you shall be your servant. Whoever wishes to be the first among you shall be your slave. Just so, the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as ransom for the many. Gospel of the Lord. So, you know, I, it's 
several layers to today's gospel just to kind of call to mind and to reflect on. You know, first of all, Jesus already knew what he was heading towards. And you have to remember, Jesus was fully human as well as fully God. He was the Son of God, but he, was, he felt all of our emotions. He knew exactly what was in store for him. And you have to imagine that as he thought about this, it was starting to build in his head, look, I'm about to be, you know, he knew what pain was. He, he had been a carpenter's son. He was hammering and doing all those things. You know, he felt pain when he hit himself accidentally and all that. He knew he was about to undergo this incredibly excruciating torture and execution for our sins. Yet, there he goes. He's going to Jerusalem. And he lets his followers know what's in store. And they're, you know, kind of, yeah, 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 yeah. Then, you know, we have the mother coming forward and asking for her sons, you know, to sit at his right and left hand. He says, you know, to do that, you're going to have to drink of my chalice. Can you drink of the chalice? And they're all, yeah, yo, yo, yes, we'll drink of the chalice. They're all excited, not fully comprehending because they weren't really listening. How often is it that, when we want to follow Christ, again, you know, going back, it's that, that thought that, you know, Christ says, take up your cross and follow me. Taking up his cross, and he also uses, you know, my yoke. It's this whole idea that the way of the cross, the way of Christ, it is not easy. If if your life is just easy street, all um all the time, all, you know, puppy dogs and roses, you might want to take a look at where you are in your life. Because Christ is pretty clear that if we are truly embracing the cross, if we're truly being last, as he, you know, as he calls us to be serving, whether that's in service to people that, you know, we're uncomfortable around, it could be in our own families, for really, truly putting ourselves out there and putting Christ first, it's not going to be easy. Ultimately, yes, it's what we are called to because the very difficulty of it is what builds us up, strengthens us, helps us to become the men and women of God, the more whole, holy people that he called me. But it's not easy. We're going to we're going to drink of the chalice to some extent, right? It could be anything from just, you know, uncomfortableness and things and having to work through them and serving God all the way to what the disciples had to undergo. I mean, there is a cost to following Christ. Uh, Chesterton, Chesterton uh, said it really well. He's got a, a quote, and I forget the exact words, but it's to the effect, you know, that, look, if I wanted a, an easy faith, I wouldn't have become a Catholic because by its nature, it should be difficult. A sword is not tempered and made this, you know, fabulous weapon that can cut through anything and do all that just by pouring some metal. If it does, it breaks. It's like an ornamental one. No, the best ones, when you think of like Japanese katanas, it spends time and stress and they, they fold the steel and refold it and refold it. It's this laborious process to create this magnificent work that's strong, it bends, but unbreakable. And so are we to become in Christ. And again, <clears throat> it's not easy. Furthermore, as we see others being courted, you know, one of our natural inclinations is jealousy. And we see the disciples, when they hear all this, they're, oh, and of course you can picture them being upset and then going up, yo, who do you think you are? You think you're better than us? You think you're this, you're that? And Christ says, whoa, 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 whoa back step back Jack right step back we're not like that we're not lording over it's not a race to see who can be better than who it's about service it's about putting others first putting God first right order God Christ others or our families and others and then ourselves <clears throat> So, you know, again, this is a repetition of what we've been hearing in Lent. Conversion and understanding there is a cost, right? If, if you're looking to just 
hey, I'm going to do all this and God's going to bless me and everything's going to be, there's this whole idea, they call it prosperity gospel. Somehow, if we're doing everything right, God's going to bless us and everything will just be peachy. That's not the gospel. That's somebody selling you a bill of goods. If you think that when you're following Christ, everything's always going to be, you know, puppy dogs and roses and Disney shows. And it's not. The way of the cross means you're going to put yourself out there. People are going to look at you funny. They're not going to necessarily treat you the same. Why? Because the world hates Jesus. That's why he was crucified. The, the world rejected him. The world continues to reject him. The world continues to look for little things to nitpick and find faults in his followers. And we know we're not perfect. We're just forgiven. Lord knows I'm not perfect. I've done so many things even since my conversion. It's sickening. The beauty of it is we have a God who continues to call us on. But it will be difficult. You will at times feel persecution. If you're not, if everything's easy street, you ought to probably re-examine your faith. And what a better time than Lent to take a deep look. And are you really putting Christ first? Are you really putting the needs of his children first and serving? Or are you simply self-seeking? Some food for thought. It's always a balancing act. It doesn't mean that we're not trying to get ahead and work and do all those things, but it means constantly coming back and that's what the church does in the liturgy calls us back to re-examine and put things in right order so hoping for some order for you and for me in this lent i want to bid you take have a great day take care take some time to pray and examine your own conscience and have a great one god bless ciao and as always peace